Hi guys, this first part is too trippy, so please fast forward if you get motion sick at all. I got carried away with the editing and it's now too late. In this video, I will show you what it looks like to cycle on West Coast Highway, one of the nice but sometimes scary stretches of uninterrupted road in Singapore. We'll also talk about why West Coast Highway can sometimes be scary and what you can do about it. First things first, can we cycle on West Coast Highway if it's a highway? Yup, cyclists are allowed here. LTA road rules state that cyclists are allowed everywhere except on expressways, road tunnels, and selected viaducts. Speaking of road usage, a gentle reminder that you can own and ride a bicycle on the roads even if you do not pay road tax. The purpose of road tax and things like the Certificate of Entitlement is that they are meant to disincentivize your ownership and use of these polluted space-hogging vehicles anyway. That is one of the reasons why motorists pay road tax based on things like whether they are running on diesel or electric power, their engine size, or their passenger capacity. Before we get into the main topic of this video, Hits up that I will be speeding up some parts to make this video shorter. I've also made an effort to pace myself and embark on a sustainable power effort. I want to tackle the start of West Coast Highway 2 International Plaza as one segment. Let me know in the comments if you think I've succeeded. Once again, you can see my stats on the left. We have the cadence, speed, power, and heart rate. West Coast Highway is a 5.5km stretch. And then from there to International Plaza is just an extra 1.9km more from the end of West Coast Highway. 2km is not a lot. However, physically and psychologically, it's still challenging because it means an extra 6-7 to seven minutes of effort, which sometimes comes with red lights. So you have to stop and then restart, which takes more energy than if you didn't have to stop. And if you don't pace yourself or you don't know how to pace yourself well during the West Coast Highway segment, it becomes mentally challenging to keep pushing. We covered how to maintain power in a previous video, so that's all I will say about it in this one. So back to today's main topic, which is what West Coast Highway can be like. There's three things to highlight, vehicles, road conditions, and winds. Depending on the time of day, there may be many huge trucks using the road to travel fast. The rumbling sounds as lorries, trucks, and cars approach you can be quite intimidating. It doesn't matter if they're half a meter away or one lane away. All vehicles will just sound near. But by now, the drivers who ply this road are probably used to seeing cyclists, so they will usually keep one lane's distance away. Most drivers don't want to be near you anyway in case you suddenly swerve out for whatever reason. Of course, you should never assume that drivers will give you a respectful distance, so just keep to the left when you cycle. When I cycled in Taiwan solo in 217, I was using the scooter lane to cycle the bottom half of Taiwan from Taizong to Hualien. Through that trip, I had an uninterrupted few days with which to learn the lesson that as a cyclist on the road, your main focus is really what is in front of you because you can't control or keep a constant eye on the vehicles behind you. And if you're cycling with others who are drafting you closely, you rely on their common sense and skills to control their own pace so that they don't cycle into you. In the middle of a pack, that's even more reason why you must always first stay alert to what is in front of you. Because if you spend unnecessary time looking back, you might find your wheel going into the rider in front of you and you might then cause a crash to yourself and those behind you. Back to vehicles. When 18 wheelers go past you at speed, their bulk displaces the air around them and pushes it towards you. This could destabilize you for a moment, so hold steady without overgripping, steer straight, and ride on. With great bulk comes great draft. You may see naughty cyclists pedaling hard and chasing these trucks. Partly, they do this because the truck acts as a windshield, allowing the cyclists to record higher speeds without having to fight wind resistance. Mostly, cyclists do this because they find it fun and the risks manageable. I do not endorse doing this because you can't assume the truck won't suddenly break and that you can escape unscathed. This next section won't be long, but in the spirit of being thorough for those who have never cycled here before, let me share what the road is like and what to look out for. 
Generally, in Singapore, the tarmac is soft yet firm, smooth with a few cracks. Similarly, for West Coast Highway, you don't have to worry too much about dodging cracks or bunny hopping over potholes. There are some places you need to look out for, but you will usually be able to spot them in advance. There are also connectors in the road, these metal strips going across and looking a bit scary because it's not just a line across and has a jagged seam. You don't have to do anything special when you ride over it beyond preparing yourself for a slight change in surface. As with any road that sees heavy vehicles, keep an eye out for debris or gravel. Once in 2022, I was cycling on West Coast Highway and then a wheel hub suddenly appeared from the lane on our right and it rolled and bounced into the lane in front of us. So if we were just a few meters ahead and it hit us, the impact could have broken some bones or our bike. Unlike our neighbouring countries, Singapore is rather flat with rather weak winds. Places like West Coast Highway and Tanamera Coastal Road are some of the few places where you're closer to the coastline and more exposed to winds if any. Winds can help you if they are tailwinds pushing you from the back. But oftentimes, the wind is not travelling in your direction, which means you're either battling headwinds or grappling with crosswinds. The larger your surface area, the more you will experience the wind. This applies to your body and also your bike. The deeper your rims, the more you might get blown about, especially if you don't have the body weight to weigh your bicycle down. I had a terrifying experience going downhill in KL at 60 km per hour with crosswind. Someone later told me to think about pushing your handlebars forward and keeping your center of gravity low. Practice builds confidence, so I've been consciously practicing things like descending in the drops since then. So here, we're almost at the end of the video. This is the downhill ramp going back onto the main road. And because it's downhill, our speed is going up even without us having to work very hard. The power is kind of going to go back down in just a bit. And the heart rate is still pretty high because we've been exerting quite some effort. Alright, now we're back on the main road and I want to filter left and I need to make sure that I look out for cars or fellow cyclists on that leftmost lane. Earlier in the video, there was a scary looking moment when I was in the second lane and there were cars on my left and my right. I was in that lane because the leftmost lane was a turning lane and I needed to go straight, which is the second lane. Right now, after that short break coming down the ramp, I'm still trying to keep my power high and steady to International Plaza. But that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.